Half the town shows up to watch. <laughs> People are coming from everywhere. The minute they get on the radio, we need a tow truck. Up come on, and they're bringing folding chairs and blankets. <laughs> I mean, we're talking 350 people with ice chests, pop, all gathered, <laughs> watching the tow truck, and then cheering me on like I had something to do with it. Go, 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 go. Next one we're going to bring on is my uh, beautiful wife. Her name is uh, Kim Dillman. She used to compete years ago as Kimberly Fritz Dillman. Kimberly Fritz, actually, first. And she won hundreds of trophies in fighting and form all over the country. She was a woman's national champion in 70 and 71. She won both fighting and form, uh, which very few people won them both the same year. She did, and uh, she's got a lot of trophies. She's been in the pressure point study since the beginning with me. She's been in the medical research. She's dissected human bodies side by side with me so that we can find out how and why <clears throat> These pressure points work and what makes the nerves tick. Kim Dillman. I was beginning to think you forgot my name there for a minute. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, I thought maybe to add a little bit to the leg point uh, discussion that was ongoing a bit earlier, because there are a couple that are kind of important for women to know especially when they're dealing with opponents that are much larger and most of the time of the opposite gender. And uh, let's see, I need a volunteer. I don't see any hands raising, so I'm going to pick someone. Nah, I want a taller guy, Chad. Thanks a lot. You've been kicked on enough today. Hmm, how about you? You got even short, turkey pants on, that's great. Uh, my husband talked primarily about points that are down here in the feet, and those are good for the ladies to use because you've seen how effective it is to bring a person down low. Um, he's about two or three inches taller than me, and that'll work just well. Um, there's also some that are a little bit higher up in the leg, if you want to face them just a minute. And maybe I'm going to pull this up a little bit. There's a point right here at the bottom of the, of the knee right here which is called spleen 9. And then there's one right up here at the top of the knee, spleen 10. That happens to be one of my personal favorites. If you all sit and feel your own leg, right where there's that little bulbous piece of tissue, muscle ending on the inside of your knee, that's, if you just go a little bit to the interior of that, that's gonna be where you're gonna find that point. And if you press in and up, you'll probably feel it a little bit on yourself. So with the discussion, the ongoing discussion about angle and direction, if I'm going to strike this point, I'm not going to strike it with my hand because I don't want to lower the upper part of my body down here. But I am going to strike it with a foot. And the angle and direction of the strike is going to be as though I'm trying to go from this side of his knee to the opposite lower side. If I do want to hit this one down here, the angle and direction has got to be going up and across. So I want to visualize as I strike as though I am trying to penetrate the knee, come out the other side for spleen 10. For spleen 9, I want to go from the inside of the knee, the upper outer quarter out here. All right, that's one very important point. And you can use it if a person is coming at you to strike. We can do the brush hold strike that way, as Judy just demonstrated out of Mr. Press's system. Or if he comes to grab me, or if he comes to grab me, and he's really got a hold of me, and I'm having trouble maybe getting the arms loose, all I have to do is come here and strike. And you can see how it's going to kick his leg out. Now the best way to get to that is to execute what we would call an inside kick to the knee and the strike comes out as though I'm trying to thrust through. So it's not a snapping type of kick. It's a thrust movement this way. It can be done with either leg, naturally. But as he comes, I'm going to come this way. And now I've got him. So it's a very, very important kick to use 
Uh, let me get the big tall guy just for the sake of showing you how to bring someone down to within striking range. Because again, I'm, I'm almost 5'10", so I'm rather tall for a woman. But if we get a shorter woman up here, and he grabs or he comes at her, and she wants to strike some of these points that George was talking about earlier, there may, may not be enough reach there. But a good way to get him in, down, is to do that kick. So that's why that particular point is very, very important for women to learn for self-defense. Yeah, I know, you want me to hit him up. I don't want to hit him up. That would be nice, this guy. He would uh, nice enough to volunteer. Okay, so that spleen point right there is very important. I don't want to pick any anymore. That one's a very important one to do. There's also another one that you can uh, use, and you don't have to use your foot. So those of you that may teach self-defense classes to women, you've got a knee to use. No one's even talked about using the knee as a weapon today. And the knee is a very effective weapon in close. So now I want, no, the guy next to you. Yeah, don't look around you. <laughs> You're tall as well. Knee techniques, everyone teaches knee techniques into the groin. Now if he sees me even going there, he's, he's, yeah, he's got a couple of them. <laughs> he's protected. Right. Most guys that aren't in the martial arts will just go whoop, and move it out of the way. They don't want anybody messing with that area. And that's a natural reaction. I think all of us do that, even women. You know, you know the guys in the clubs, they get the groping. You know, it's a natural reaction to move away. I don't even want to go there. I don't want to go there. There's a much better place to go. And that is the inside of the thigh, about midway up. You can feel where the muscles kind of separate. And in the inside of your thigh, about midway up, right in here, is the point. And that's a nasty one to use, and it hurts. But there are kata movements which reach and do this. That's not grabbing somebody and pulling them down. If he wants to resist me, he's going to resist me. I can't pull him in. That's OK. Maybe he reached. All I have to do is come over top and into Ooh, there, yeah. and he's going down. And it doesn't matter if he has a cup on, because I'm not going there, remember. I'm going here. He doesn't like that. That hurts a lot. So that's a very, very effective knee strike to use. And as you can see, he's taller than I am. It brought him down right where I would want him to continue an attack. Another place you can knee is between the pubic bone and the waist. And that's called the sea of key. It's a lot of points in the conception vessel in there, plus a lot of very other important points in the lower abdomen. You really mess up someone's energy big time by kneeing into there. And once again, the technique would be about the same. If he grabs and I do a technique, well, that's a little low now for me. But the sea of key is right there. He doesn't want me going there either, because that's going to mess up his energy. So that's a very good knee strike area. So when you're teaching your self-defense classes for women, you don't have to focus on the groin. That's something everybody thinks about. And by the way, wearing a cup really won't protect you because you also have points in the inguinal crease in there. And if I come in at an angle, it's going to drive the edge of your cup right into those. And that's not going to feel good it. either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thank you very much. You would ask me uh, uh -huh. about this move. Can you ask me about that? Yes, sir. Crane grab. You want to hit me with it? How many people do that move? Huh? How many were told that was a groin grab? <laughs> you really going to step in and grab somebody's groin? Only if I like it, sir. No, yeah, that's <laughs> about that. It's going to punch the daylights out of you. <laughs> take, take your glasses off. Teaches kata, goes to here. You certainly ain't doing this, because he'd be all over your hands.
with his hands, I mean, punching you in the face. <clears throat> but if a guy dives to take you down, and that was considered in kata, as you had sumo wrestling that goes back hundreds of years, and they always considered ground grappling and somebody trying to take you down. And I've taught ground grappling for many years, I'm not saying that, but many years before it became a fad in this country. I've had ground grappling seminars and uh, all over the world for many, many, many years. And if you didn't see any old pictures of me, but back in 1965, I wrestled a big black bear just to show I could do it. And I used to just grapple and wrestle with anybody. But the, he's going to take me down. He's going to be reaching. He's going to be coming in. He's going to have his head tucked in and try to dive and get my legs. This hand's going to go right under and touch him on the facial pressure point on the opposite side, positive to negative, and this one shorts him out. That's what that move is for. You're diving in. I'm going to show you in slow motion. That's to break his neck. In case you didn't put him out with this, with this technique, that's to grab his head and reverse it. So when you do this in a kata, if you're thinking groin grab, you'll never use it. But if a person is diving and grabbing at you, and you touch the, the uh, negative side with the positive hand, and you tap right here, He's still molded. That's the best day ever. That's the best time. Best you ever did. Did that a good one? Awesome. Yeah, but I didn't hit you. I just barely yeah, touched you. Tap. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's just a tap. See, people think hit. Yeah. I just barely touched. The art out of China is called the death touch. It's because of the backhand. People go, well, you said that was a death touch. I just saw you hit the guy. This hand only has to touch, that one hits. This hand has to touch, that one hits. This hand will touch, that one will hit. It was called the death touch, not because there's, you don't strike. It's called the death touch because you've got to touch one of these touch pressure points to make your strike 100%. If I go around the room and chop everybody, 10% fall down. If I hit a hit point, touch a touch point, and chop 100 people, 90% go down. If I do them simultaneously, 100% go down. I watch doing it 100% because I don't want to injure anyone in the seminar. You know, you see enough people knocked out, you see them dizzy enough with one touch, one tap, you get the picture if I hit him a little harder or just did something a little different or grabbed that guy's head on the way out, <clears throat> how it would break his neck because basically he was out. And then I'm to complete the move. I'm to complete the move. So I just wanted to explain to you and let you see how and why the death touch is called the death touch. Something has to touch. But then as you get good at this art, you will get lighter and lighter at it. If you watch any of my early videotapes, you will learn from them, but you'll see that I was just a little harder and a little tougher or stronger than I am on my later tapes. And that's because I'm been working out just the feeling of it. Early on, I thought, well, I better hit that hit point pretty hard. And I found out I don't have to. I can just get the same result done with that tap. You're on the way to the floor, I can hit you with something else. The whole part of this art is to get control, and everybody wants to see the knockouts. So I want to finish with a good knockout. But the knockouts is not the entire part of the art. Breaking down those moves in the kata with realism, so when you teach a student to do a kata and to do these moves and these jumps and these turns, that they know why in their mind they're doing them. That sets a positive reaction in their mind. And now people in my group and they come to my seminar and say, I can't wait to go back and do my katas. I can't wait to see that move that I'm doing yet. 
I can't wait to do my jump because now I know what it's for. I can't wait to learn the next kata because it's deeper in the pressure points. Now, people have come up to some of my instructors and said, man, what Mr. Doman showed today, we shouldn't show that to children or we shouldn't. You've only seen the children's portion today. You have not seen the advanced portion yet. The advanced portion of this is all over the body and gets very deadly. And you can believe this or not, but we're even knocking people out without touching them. Through the pressure points of a whole tape on chi energy and getting the chi going. And I just had a seminar in North Carolina and I knocked out my 24th individual without touching him. I've only done it 24 times. But I never even lay a hand on him. And I'm only mad that I didn't get that 20 years ago because 20 years ago I could do the same thing. I just didn't know it 20 years ago. I didn't do it 20 years ago because I wasn't told I could. You know? Kid comes up to you in your school and says to your sensei, you think I can knock somebody out from two feet away? Sensei goes, no. Well, then the kid doesn't go try. But you tell him yes, and he goes, tries. He's going to get it. He's going to get it, or he's going to get this. In the past, we just said no. Sensei, could this be something else in the kata? Oh, no. No, no. It's a, it's a down block. Okay, then the kid's mind shuts off. He was told no. He has a negative as his subconscious, and his teacher told him no. Some of the best moves that, well, not the best, but some good moves that we have out of kata, we've had kids come up with them. If the kids, now that they're allowed to think, say, this move, sensei, could it be this, this, and this? I'm hitting this pressure point and that pressure point. It works. Yes, it can be done. And the good thing about kata, there could be three people here doing kata side by side. And you could be thinking block, block, double block, groin grab. And the next guy could be thinking at the level that you witnessed on these tapes. Who's getting ahead in the game? The guy that is practicing with his mind what's going on. And I could be the third guy doing kata and be at a deeper level yet and neither one of the other two would know what's in my mind for that technique. That's what kata was created for. Kata was not created as a sport, it wasn't created as a waste of time. That's why the early masters only knew one kata. I used to hear so-and-so in the Orient knew one kata and he was considered one of the deadliest people to walk the face of the earth. So-and-so knows two katas. And I used to go, <clears throat> I know 25, you better not mess at me. <laughs> but he knew his one kata this way. This way that he could break down every move. He knew why his feet went from out to in. He knew why a step took place. He knew why a cross step, why a side cross. If you know that, now a lot of you are only seeing it today. And if you practice it and every time you do your kata, you have a reason for these steps and stances and the hands, you're improving your mind, you're improving your kata, and you're improving your self-defense. Thank you. Are you all right? You have a headache, or if you do, see Kim. So um, what do you guys think? Yeah. yeah good. 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 Would you like to have Mr. Would you like to come here and have Mr. Dillman back again? Yeah. 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 Okay. We're definitely going to do that. We're going to have a lot of tapes. We're going to start. We're, you're going to start to see seeing more of Mr. Dillman, more of some of his compadres. Uh, and we're going to continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the pressure points and showing you how to use it in your own art. I think that's what we're all looking for. It fits that's in everybody's art. Exactly. Exactly. One quick commercial. Yes, sir. September 8th, 9th, and 10th, I have a camp. It's only two hours from here in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania. I have a man coming in from Alaska. 
He's a, a Korean individual. He's a Korean individual that was actually born in China, educated in Tibet and Russia. And he's going to teach for three days. And I'm just telling you, if you come up, it'll be well worth your money. He's going to teach some things. I've been to martial arts 40 years, and he does a punch that I would have swore didn't exist. It goes back to if you're told no, then it's no. But he does a punch. He's going to demonstrate it. You ain't going to be able to learn to do it. But he learned several self-defense techniques from Tibetan monks, and he's going to be teaching a healing system where you'll heal your own body. And he's really good. He's a Korean person, born in China, educated in Tibet and Russia. He's a genius. He reads, writes, and speaks six languages. He invented the machine that reads all of the organs of the body. In this country, we have one that reads the heart. But he invented one that reads the liver, the kidney. Every organ you have, he can get a reading and tell you how healthy each organ is. He's the inventor of that machine. This guy's actually a genius. He does a no-inch punch. You have to see it to believe it. He said, Bruce Lee had a one-inch punch. He said, I do a no-inch punch. The Tibetan monks got it from earthquake. It's called an earthquake. He can actually, and I can't do it, he can put his hand on you, like that, vibrate his whole body and blow you across the room. <laughs> no, I don't do it. <laughs> I don't do it. He just holds his hand like that, and he uses internal energy. He ripples like a wave, and it all takes place within a second. You have to see it. 40 years into martial arts, it's one of the most vicious punches I've ever seen. He won't do it on your chest because he'll injure your heart. But he'll do it on your hand. I held my hand out. He put his hand against and knocked my hand back like that. My hand hurt harder, or felt harder than any punch. Hurt. Harder than anybody can punch you. He just puts it against and he can rumble his body. I can't even describe it. You have to see it. Because it all happens at the same time. It ain't like it comes up. All of a sudden he just shakes like an earthquake. And he doesn't move his hand at all. There's no punch. No punch takes place. So he's going to demonstrate that. You won't learn how to do it, because it actually took him 12 years to learn how to do that. He had to learn how to move his toes before his instructor would teach him how to move his ankle. Then after he learned how to move his ankle, he learned how to move his knee. Then he had to learn how to move his hip. And it took a year between all these, and he had to practice. Now, nobody in this country has that kind of patience. <laughs> you know, we want to go in there, we want it now. I want to rumble now. <laughs> But actually, he could just put his hand like this. How about that for police tapes, Chad? He can just put his hand against you, blow you across the room, you're probably going to have a heart attack. Because he would affect the heart. So we have him up there teaching, 8, 9, and 10. And he's amazing, an amazing individual. He studied some self-defense techniques with Tibetan monks. And they're just different. That's all i got to say. We're going to have a fun time. And he's into pressure points because he was an acupuncturist. And he's a student of mine for that, because he had the pressure points for healing, but he studies with me on how to hurt. Remember, remember I told you early on in this thing, a doctor can be a doctor, but he doesn't know how to kill anybody. He'll go to an acupuncturist and say, is that a rub point or a hit point? He'll know it's a pressure point, but he won't know how to attack it. Well, this guy was a healer. I'm a herder. Okay. I'd like to say one more thing. M Mr. Dillman has been for the last 20, 25 years has been doing what, this is my partner Joe Wolf, what Joe and I had the idea, and we thought it was a new idea, was just to bring different martial arts together with Dojo TV. And it's, it's nice to see, we're sitting in a room right here where probably five years ago this wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible to put people from American Kenpo Karate and Chin Na and, and Kenpo and Jiu Jitsu and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Ninjitsu Jitsu and all these different styles. And you're seeing that today. And the forefathers of that were Mr. David Ricks, uh, Mr. Dillman, uh, uh, Tom Clark. There were people out there, Leroy Epperson, and there's so many others that I, I apologize if I'm not naming you. But these were the forefathers. These were the people that saw this coming. They realized that, Dr. G said, there, you know, no martial art holds a monopoly of the sun. All martial arts have something to offer. All we're trying to do here at Dojo TV is show you that. And don't, and for any of you who are interested in what we're doing, we, at Dojo TV, you're going to have the opportunity to train one video over the internet 
with many martial arts. You're going to be able to see the techniques that have made Jeet Kune Do famous or the techniques that have made Muay Thai boxing famous or any of the other arts that you can imagine. You're going to have the opportunity to train one-on-one -on -one with um, Mr. George Dillman, learn women's self-defense from Ms. Kim Dillman. You're going to have the opportunity to learn police tactics from a Mr. David Ricks. You're going to have the opportunity to learn the techniques that have made the Gracie system legendary by Carlson Gracie Jr. And what we've done is we've put all of this together and we are constantly adding. We are adding masters. It was interesting because when we first started this, it was, it was like pulling teeth. It was talking to the masters, explaining this big philosophy that we had in mind. And the first person that really showed an interest and said to us, this is, this is where the martial arts is going, was Tom Clark. I thank you, Tom, for giving us that, that encouragement. It meant a lot. Because now we're, we're at a point now where the masters are coming. Raise your hand, Tom. Give him Tom Clark. Clark. <laughs> we're at a point now where we are getting calls from masters all over the world who are saying, I see what you're doing. I've been, I've had my videos with other companies. I want you guys to be the company that produces our videos. We're honored. We're very, very humbled. And we will do our best job to create to make you, the masters, look phenomenal. But just as important we will do a great job so that if someone comes in and they've never seen a certain martial art, they're going to be able to watch it on video and it's going to be explained in detail, the true moves, not the, not, not the, the mysticism, not the secret. Well, I'll tell you in 10 years. I'll tell you if you're a good student. Mr. Dillman has proven that that's all bunk. <laughs> what, what is going on now is a renaissance in the martial arts and we intend on being one of those companies that takes the martial arts into the 21st century. If anybody here would like to have the opportunity to train in all of these different styles, uh, we're, actually gonna, we're actually signing people up if you'd like to become a Dojo TV member, which basically means that you'll be able to train in all the different styles right over the internet, plus once a month you'll get a videotape. It's $19.95 a month and you have the opportunity to train with masters of many styles. Plus, in addition to that, when you buy a videotape, we have a full line, a full mall or store of videotapes from many masters from and we're currently negotiating deals with with major fight companies to bring their videos in, and we're going to continue to add these videos if you're a dojo tv member if you're not a member you're going to get a great price you're probably going to get the best price you can buy anywhere if you are a dojo tv member you're going to pay ten dollars or less for that video okay if you are a dojo tv member when certain specials come out, when certain seminars come out, if you notice that there was one price for non-members and another price for members, that was not meant to discriminate. It was meant to invite everybody in. And if you'd like to become a Dojo TV member, all you have to do is we can actually sign people up right outside. We'll get you an ID number. You'll be able to refer people. Not only will you be able to refer people, but you're going to be able to get paid for telling people about Dojo TV. Wouldn't you like to be able, just have a little piece of having the opportunity to get paid of sharing George Dillman with the world? I know I would. We're very, very excited about it. Thank you very much. Take a picture, everybody, and a free video. So make sure you see Chris on the way out. Give her your name, and we'll give you the certificate. Right. Thanks for coming. Uh,